Hello there, I'm Colin Patterson, editor of the Sunday Sun, and I'm here with my deputy, Ken Oxley, to review Sunday's paper. Uh, we we'll start off by uh, going over the, the splash, Ken, which was a, a tragedy for a North East family, wasn't it? It was. It was a, it was a, a, a double tragedy, really, because um, we reported the news that um, the, 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 the baby, which is about a year and a half, two years old, uh, is, 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 is drowned in, in Turkey. But um, it's uh, not the first time that tra a tragedy like this has happened. No, that, that, that's true. Uh, the, the family suffered an, uh, a similar tragedy two years ago, didn't they? They did, yes. And um, we reported on, on that as well. It's uh, an incredible chain of events, really. And uh, I think we did well to pull the whole thing together as quickly as we did, given the information that we had. So, um, I mean, obviously, it's never good to report news like that. But if you, if you have to report it, then it's, I think... Uh, if you can do it as comprehensively as we did it on Sunday, um, that's the way to go. Yes. On a, on a lighter note, we've also got Bollywood coming to Tyneside. What do you think about that? Uh, fantastic. It's great that uh, it's great that Newcastle can can double up and uh, be used for uh, for these films. Um, fantastically interesting story. It's this this chap apparently is the Bollywood equivalent of of Brad Pitt. So although right. we may we, we may not know him in Ty in Tyneside. Uh, or in the north of England, but he's uh, universally known in his own country. I'm sure we will know him by the time he's finished filming yes. here. And again, it was a strange week for one of our reporters when he was sent out to, uh, to a phone box that hasn't been used for a call for 12 months. That's right. Um, we sent Tom out um, in Tow Law in County Durham. What I liked about this um, was the fact that Tom tried to make a call from the, the phone box, and no wonder it hasn't been used, because BT have removed the coin box. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh well, uh, yeah. But it's it's it, it, so it, you, you just use it for emergency calls. You can just use it for emergency calls. Right. But it it did underline um, a wider problem across the region. I mean, there are a lot of these phone boxes uh, under review, obviously because of the prevalence of mobile phones. Now we don't need yeah. the phone boxes yeah. as much. But for example, here we've got in North Yorkshire, there are 222 phone boxes under threat. It's a incredible. lot of phone boxes. A lot of phone boxes. And Sunday's paper was an excellent paper. It really was packed with news. And we've got a double-page spread on how um, killer Albert Dryden's trying to seek his freedom. Everybody remembers the Dryden story. Um, he, he, he famously um, shot planning officer Harry Collinson uh, dead 17 years ago, live on TV. Um, incredibly, Albert Dryden thinks that he's uh, now on the brink of freedom. Um, and we've got an incredible interview with him um, from behind bars. Some amazing detail, I thought, from, yeah, our, from yeah, our man Nigel yeah. Green. Um, aside from the fact that he, he believes he's got a really good chance, he also tells us that he's got supporters all around the world who've raised £47,000 to help him fight his case to get out of jail. That's quite a fighting fund. And, and also you get a really great insight into... I, I thought we've got a fantastic insight into... Um, Albert's life behind bars, the fact that um, his little treats, he, he, made, he, loves, he loves his chocolate biscuits with his tea and he, he, the things he does, he makes his jewellery boxes and he makes his cars out of matchstick boxes, uh, sorry, of matchsticks and um, he watches, his favourite programme is Emma Deal. <laughs> On the other side of the coin of course, uh, Mr Collinson's family are totally against the idea, obviously. Understandably, yes. yes. Yeah. Good. It, was, it was a cracking tale. Really good tale, really good tale. Yeah. What else have you got there? Well, what we've got here is, um, I thought this was excellent as well. We, um, the, we, I think people are aware of, that, of, of the, 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 the tragic story of young Daniel Squires, um, who, who died at the age of 16. He had, he had, he had a type of, type of cancer, didn't he? Yes, that's right. And um, he was a huge fan of, of Pete Doherty and uh, Baby Shambles and Libertines. Uh, Pete Doherty turned up at uh, a wake for Daniel uh, in, in, in South Shields and, and played a few songs and we've got exclusive pictures of the actual gig um, and what was interesting about this, probably something I can't say with a video camera rolling, no, true, was true. that um, there was a particular song, a, a baby shambles song that Daniel uh, loved uh, with a rather rude word in it, Yes. Uh, which the, um, the weren't allowed to play at, the, uh, at his cremation. For, for obvious reasons. Um, so Pete, um, he played it at the weight instead. Right. So, 
It's nice to see Pete Doherty being uh, involved in, in, in showing his, uh, his uh, better side, shall we say. <laughs> Something positive. Yes. Yes, yes indeed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Again, unfortunate circumstances, though. Well, that, that's our review of the paper. We hope you enjoyed reading it. Um, if you didn't get it this week, then make sure you get it next week. And tomorrow, uh, at this time, we'll feature a bulletin on the uh, new games that are available and what our correspondent Darren Kelso thinks about them.